work with JavaScript without working with a JavaScript object. So let's go ahead and talk about what they are. So a JavaScript object is a collection of named values. I know that probably doesn't make any sense here, but they, they're going to solve some problems for us. For instance, look at our students array here. We've done this before, but we've got John, Jacob, Jingleheimer, and Smith. You know, we've got some students in our class. Okay, but these students have first names, they have last names, they have ages. Um, you know, they they have different attributes about them. And so, you know, how would we store that? Well, you know, what would this be? Would I would I instead be like, you know, student names, and then would I do another array, you know, such as student ages, you know, you know, be like five, six, five, five, and seven. Okay, would I do something like that? And I'm like, okay, well, the first one's for John, the second one's for Jacob, and so forth. Um, we could, but that's very dangerous. Who knows if these arrays are in the right order, if they're even associated. It's just very, very dangerous thing to do. So there's a better way. So let's talk about our students example again, uh, but uh, refactor it with JavaScript objects and make it much more powerful. Okay, we can still have an array of students, um, but things are gonna change a little bit here. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a JavaScript object up here called student. So var student, okay? like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to give the student a name. So name, in fact, we could do it more so like this. First name is John, comma, last name is uh, Parker, John Parker, that's kind of generic, comma, age, I'm going to say seven. So what is going on here? This is kind of funky. Well, you're familiar with the var. We're creating a variable here, and we're giving it a name. This is called a student. And then we do equals to, and this is interesting, we're doing curly braces. And inside the curly braces, we have something called first name here. And notice how there's no quotes around this. This is an actual um, variable name of sorts, okay? It's, a pro it's called a property, an, a property of an object. And it, so it has a key, a property or a key. So as a key, the key is first name, and the value is John. The key here is last name, and the value is Parker. And then there's a key here called age with a value of seven. And we separate the keys and values with commas. Now, you might see a JavaScript object look a little bit like this. And that's okay. One thing about JavaScript you need to know is that spaces do not matter. The semicolon matters, but the spaces do not. The, the, the interpreter, the JavaScript interpreter, will just skip right over the spaces. So you may see an object that looks like this. And maybe that makes more sense too, but it's more common to see them organized like so. And what this does is it allows us to have multiple attributes uh, for a single type of object or thing um, that are grouped together. So I want you to visualize all the different things that you interact with or that you've seen maybe in an app or website that uh, is grouped together. Think about a vehicle, a vehicle may have uh, an odometer reading, it may have an engine size, it may have a certain amount of tires, some engine, some vehicles have three tires, some have two, some have four, some have more. And so you can start thinking about everything that you do in programming in terms of objects, groupings of things. Uh, if you have a human being as an object, you know, they're gonna have eyes, a mouth, a nose. Okay, you wouldn't wanna create an array of human, you know, this human attribute, this human attribute. It just doesn't make sense. But objects make sense because you can group everything together. Uh, and it, it's very powerful. So first things first is learn the syntax, okay? Which is this right here. This is the syntax. Okay, I'm gonna comment this out just for right now. So we've got an object here named a student. And what we can do, all right, is we can print things out uh, of this object uh, by using the dot syntax. So console.log. We want to say student dot first name and console dot log student dot last name. Okay, now you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute. I thought uh, I've seen you know us use the dot before, like on console dot log, right, right here. But why aren't we putting parentheses at the end of this? Well, that's because uh, this is not a function. This object is not a function, and none of these properties in here, as of right now, are functions. So we're just grabbing it and printing it. So let's see if it actually works. Let's go to our browser. Refresh. John and Parker. So as you can see, 
John and Barker. It actually worked. So we're able to access it using the dot syntax. So you grab the object by its name, its variable name, using the dot syntax, and then you grab the property out of it. We don't say student.john, we say student.firstName because the value may be different. We grab the key name and then it retrieves the value for us. So whatever key name you grab, it's gonna grab the value. There's another way to do this as well. Console.log, say student, and then we can actually almost treat it like an array with the square braces. And then we can say in, um, in quotes here, first name, okay? and console.log student, and we're gonna say last name. Now it's a slightly different way of doing it, but uh, still, still just as valid. And uh, I don't like doing it this way because a lot of the IDEs, they're not gonna auto-recognize this. It'll auto-recognize the dot syntax, but when you put it in quotes, it, it may not, so you may misspell it. But let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. So it worked. So just like you can access an element in an array using the index, on an object, you can access it by the name of the key. Okay, an object is like a hash table, if you've ever heard of that, or it's like a dictionary if you've ever used Swift. Basically, it has a key and a value, okay? And these are very amazing things to use um, for collections because it's very fast to grab a key name. If you have to go through an array, you're, you may have to go through every single element in the array to find the thing that you're looking for. Whereas an object, you simply need to grab the key name. And so here's a rule of thumb, okay? If you ever feel the need to have to um, go through a list of objects or have to go through all the keys inside of an object to find something, you're probably using them wrong, okay? It, you, you usually know what you're looking for when you're working with an object, and that may not make a whole bunch of sense right now, but as time goes by, uh, it, it, it will. So just remember that you, you should not be iterating through objects and keys and things like that. You just should be accessing the values out of them like so. Um, this is cool. So um, we can now build a better array of students that have more attributes than what we used to have. But we kind of have a problem here. Um, if, if you look at this here, we've got one student and with these properties on here, but it's not overly reusable. I'm going to I'm going to comment out these console.logs here. It's not overly reusable. OK. And so how can I make this more reusable so we can have multiple students? OK, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to say var student one equals new object, like so. Using the new keyword, we can create an object, okay, an empty object. Another thing we could have done is like this, same exact thing, okay? So let me write this down here. Creates a new empty object, okay? And uh, we'll use the other syntax for the next student. So what we'll do here is we'll say student one dot first name equals John. Okay, this is exactly the same thing we did here, except we're using the dot syntax, and I think it's a little cleaner and a little bit faster. Student one dot last name equals Parker. Student one dot age equals seven. Okay, so we've in essence done the exact same thing here, and it's a little more readable. Um, using the dot syntax. Again, we could have done it this way as well too. And the choice that you use to make is completely up to you. I've seen it written many different ways in many different projects, and I can't tell you this is absolute best practice because uh, again, every project, everyone does it differently. It's usually based on your team, uh, whatever the team likes. So use whatever method that you want, okay? Let's go ahead and use a different method, in fact, to create uh, another student. In fact, let's call this student zero, and let's call this Jane and uh, Jane Lou, and she's eight. So here's one way to create an object. Here's another way to create an object. And here's yet another way to create an empty object. We say var student two equals, and we just do empty curly braces like so. And then we can say student two dot first name equals Zach. Student two dot last name equals Bobo, just whatever comes to my brain. Student two dot age equals five. Okay, so there are three different ways of really working with objects right here. Okay, pretty cool. There is yet another. There is yet another way to work with them, uh, and uh, 
I'll show you that in just a minute here, but first let's add these to an array before you get confused with the, with the fourth way. So now, let's go down here. We got our students, right? Like so. So what I want to do here, actually, is just make an empty array. Okay. Let's just move these things around here for fun. Put them right here. Okay. So what I want to do here is just push some students. So students dot push. And we're going to say student zero. Students dot push student one. Students dot push student two. Okay. So now we've pushed students this array. Kind of like we've done before, but they're a lot more powerful now. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure our code is still good here. So students.length, yes. Okay, so instead of console.log, well, you know what? We will. We'll console.log the whole entire student. So we're going to print up the entire student object and see what happens, okay? Before, it would just print up the name, remember? So let's refresh. Interesting. So it's printing up objects. And look at this. There's an age. A first name and a last name, an age, a first name and a last name. How powerful is that? So we didn't have to have three arrays. We just have an we have now have an array that has um, objects in it which stores associated data. So things are a lot more powerful now. Now you can start thinking in terms of building very robust applications. Okay, if you have a banking app and you have an account, you know account's not just going to have the balance, right? An account's going to have history of transactions, debits, withdrawals. Uh, a bunch of other information. Uh, it may have an associated profile, which has your first name, last name, address, billing address, zip code, all that stuff. And you can use objects for all of that stuff, which is pretty amazing. Okay, you don't have to have a bunch of different arrays to store all that. So, again, you, you can give it a name. And there's keys and there's values, okay? And the, the values can be of any type. In fact, you can even, you can even have an object that has a function, okay? So, let me show you something cool here. And then I'll show you the next way of creating an object. So, greeting. Okay, and we can actually create a function inside of an object here as a, as a key and a value. So, the value of this key here, greeting, is actually a function, which is really cool. So, what we can do is we can say return, okay. Let's say um, the, like, hello, my name is, you know, Jane with the last name, or... Hi, I'm Jane. I'm eight years old. Okay, so return, of course, not to strangers. This is she's talking to people she knows because we don't talk to strangers. So return, hello, hi, I'm, okay, All right. Plus, I'm gonna say this dot first name plus hi, I'm Jane, and I'm plus age plus eight years old okay and i need to put the this keyword on age now what is this okay what is this this by putting this keyword here okay it's going to refer to the properties inside of the object okay and, and that's really important to know uh, because if i for instance had a variable here called var first name okay this is still going to specify the one out here if I wanted to access this first name in here, okay, it's going to be like that right there. Now, this is called local scope. This variable here has local scope, and this variable up here has more of a global scope, okay? And so we need this keyword to refer to any of the properties we want to reference up there, okay? You may not understand it now, but just know if you're inside of a function and you want to reference the other elements inside of an object, okay, you use the this keyword. So, hi, I'm first name Jane, and I'm this age, eight years old. So we can actually put a function inside of the student here, which is really cool. So what we can do is check this out. We can console.log, okay, student zero dot greeting. So notice how on this property, we do put the parentheses at the end, kind of like the console.log, because it is a function. So we need to call that function, okay? So student dot greeting. So if I save it and run it, Hi, I'm Jane, and I'm eight years old. 
Okay, now this may be completely confusing to you because objects are very complicated. And if it is, that's okay. This stuff takes time. Okay, I can only teach you so much. You have to start using it in order to finally understand it here. Okay, but you have the code to look at and you have this video to watch here. So we created a function uh, inside of the object, or rather, the key name is greeting and the value is of type function. Okay, whereas the value of this is a string and the value of this is eight. Notice how the greeting and the age and the last name and first name, those are all key names and they're all very similar. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's really cool. In fact, um, this is really interesting now. So we have this cool greeting here, but do I really want to go copy this and paste this into every single one? No, because that would be a lot of code to duplicate. Remember, we don't we don't like to duplicate. You know, I wouldn't want to go in here and say student dot greeting equals and I have to copy and paste this this function. That's kind of a pain. So there's one more way of creating reusable objects, and this is very important to know because everything you do in coding. Uh, needs to be around reusability. The more you can reuse things, the better your code is. So let's go ahead and talk about this now. Okay, things are about to get a little more confusing, but it's very important that you know how to do this, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the object constructor uh, to create um, reusable objects. And you do so by specifying a function. And I know it's weird, like a function, wait a minute, I thought these were objects. But in JavaScript, everything is almost kind of an object, like underneath the hood, technically. Okay, so instead, we're going to do something called function student. All right, we're going to actually create a function, but this is an object that we can that we can use, even though it's a function. Okay, a function that is an object. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow some parameters to be passed in. So first name, last name, and age. Okay, and then what we're going to do is instead of using the colon here and the value for the keys and values, we're gonna say this dot first name equals first name, this dot last name equals last name, and this dot age equals age. Now, you're like, what's going on here? Why are you using the same names? What is happening? So this is like a function where you put parameters in here. You can name them whatever you want. So to show you that we can put whatever we want, I'm gonna call this first and last, we'll leave age the same. So first and last. So all we're doing is we're taking the variables that are passed in and assigning them to the keys, okay? This is no different. So this dot first name is no different than using the colon here in this literal object. It's a literal object because we're putting the data in right when we create it. Okay, this does not have data in it yet, right? We're just kind of scaffolding the object so it can be reused. So this dot first name, it does not exist until we actually say this dot first name and we pass it in there, okay? And then it exists. So first name, last name. So to specify your key names, you just say this dot key name, okay? So first, last, and age. And then what we can do is we can now take this greeting, which is a function here. So we can command X that or control X. And I can say this dot greeting equals, we can actually create a function in there. Okay, so this dot greeting, <laughs> this dot greeting, okay, this dot greeting is equal to that function we created. Now, I'm gonna comment all of this stuff out here, okay? Let's comment this out, and let's comment this out. You'll have access to all of this code here, so don't worry. Okay, and let's go ahead and console, or comment this out. So we've got this really cool new way of defining students, okay? This is reusable. The other things are not reusable because we have to put data. We have to make student one, student two. That is a lot of work, okay? So I'll put it right here. So student, great, so this is our function. So how do we use this over and over and over again? It's pretty simple. Uh, we can do it using the new keyword. So I could say var s1 for student one, equals new, okay, using the new keyword, remember, new student, and what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's say, Jenny, and then the last name is uh, Laga, and she is five. So interesting, we just created a new student, and we did it in a lot less code, actually, you know, this had one, two, three, four lines of code, and this was one line of code. Uh, to create a new student. And so what's happening is, just like you've used functions in the past, when you put the Jenny in, it goes here into the first name, 
the Laga goes here in the last name, and the age goes into the age. And then it assigns them here, and everything's usable. And what we can do now is we can say console.log s1 for student1 and console.log s1.greeting, just like we did before. And let's make sure it actually works. Okay, student. So there's the student. Greeting. Hi, I'm Jenny, and I'm five years old. So it did work. How cool is that? So we, we've now created an object constructor is what it's called. Basically, think of it as a constructor. It's constructing a new object every time. Think of it kind of like, you know how there's a car factory, and it makes a lot of different cars? So there's a blueprint that tells how cars will be made, and then you can create multiple copies of that car at a factory, right? Uh, although some of, the diff some of the data might be different, you know? Uh, the name of the car might be different, the model, the the uh, the engine size and so you pass in different data but the framework or the scaffolding is still all the same and that's what we've done here because we've created a blueprint for a student and I personally like to actually um, I like to capitalize uh, them like that so I know that it's an object that I can reuse okay and so let's take this a step further now looking at our students array I'm gonna comment this out here what we can do is we can say students.push, okay? I can say new student. Now we can say Jenny, okay? And then Laga, and then age five, okay? And we can push another one, students.push, new student. And let's say Timmy Turner. You know, let's say he's eight. And, um, Students that push, new student, Carl, uh, and uh, Carl Jr. This is his last name. That's a weird last name, but uh, whatever. Four. Okay. So we've got some students here. And using the new keyword here, we've basically used our blueprint to create a new object. We've instantiated a new object each time. We pass data in, and it's very clean three lines of code, three students here, and now are you ready to watch the magic happen? Okay, let's say we want a program that now goes through and asks, it It says the student, or it asks each student to say their name, okay? Um, so what we can do is we can, inside of our for loop, do we still have it down here? We do, look at that! Uh, it's still here, so what we can do is inside of our for loop, we can say var student, so we can grab a specific student out of that array, var student equals students index so we're going into this array we're, we're using the index to grab one of the students out and then we can actually say console.log student.greeting okay student.greeting so we're going to go through every single one uh, in the array of students which is three we're going to grab one student out of there we just store it in a temporary variable here okay student and then we say console.log student.greeting and if we run this, this cool little loop that we've made here. Hi, I'm Jenny, I'm five years old. Hi, I'm Timmy, I'm eight years old. Hi, I'm Carl, I'm four years old. How cool is this? So we've created reusable objects that you can use with your arrays and you can use a for loop to go through the array to print up information in the object. And this is the foundational building blocks for everything that you are going to do uh, in uh, JavaScript programming. Okay, really cool stuff. Really, really cool stuff. And it may be confusing right now, but you will get it so as so long as you keep practicing. Okay, there is one more thing I want to show you uh, with JavaScript objects, and that's how to loop through the keys and values uh, inside of a JavaScript object, uh, which is, is was, this is what I was telling you about. I don't really recommend you do, but it is important that you know it because you may see it in code. So let's do that now. If I wanted to iterate through the um, the keys and objects in a particular student, uh, I can do so. So, what I want to do here, I'm gonna comment this out here. Let's just grab the first student. Okay, so we're gonna say var student equals students. I'm gonna say zero. So let's grab the very first student, which is Jenny Laga. And let's say we just want to go through and print up all the keys and values. Okay, so we can do that using a for in loop. And a for in loop goes like this for var x. Now you've, you've probably seen this before, okay? Var x in student. Now the difference is we actually use the keyword in, okay? So what it's going to do is um, actually probably a better name for this is key. 
for each key in student. Okay, so it's going to go through all the keys uh, in student, and you can use them accordingly. So I can say console.log student key. Okay, remember we grab, remember we can grab the key name, or we can grab the value from an object using the key name. We did that. Where did we do that? We did that over here somewhere. Probably commented it out. Okay, right here. See this? See how we grabbed um, the value of uh, the first name property by using the first name key? Okay. So we're doing the exact same thing here. It's going to go through the entire student, all the keys in it, and it's going to put it in a new variable each time. So the first uh, value it's going to be is first name and then last name and then age. It's going to go through each of the keys and store it in this variable here every single time. And then all we're doing is grabbing the value uh, of that key and printing it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and show that now. Okay, Jenny Laga 5 function. Okay, it printed all four of the keys up. Now, sometimes you do this for debugging. You can't figure out where the problem is, and so you do this, but this is not very common um, uh, in your uh, work. And if, if you are doing this, there's probably a better way to be writing your code. You, you don't typically want to iterate through all the keys inside of an object. You may if it, your app calls for it, but uh, it's important to know this is called a for in loop. Okay. Or in, and you typically use it to iterate through objects, uh, keys, and values. So you've learned a lot. This video, uh, I, I expect it to be confusing. I expect you to be frustrated. Um, if you're absolutely new to programming, this is going to be confusing. And if, if it's not confusing, great. Good for you. Keep moving on. But I would expect it to be confusing to new people, and you're going to want to watch it again and again, and uh, just takes practice uh, using these things over and over and over again. But that's it for now. This is Mark Price with devslopes.com. I'll see you soon.